What is going on, Wolfpack Savage here? In today's video, we're going to be breaking down and analyzing some random quads gameplay. Now, unfortunately, during this gameplay, we do run into a hacker that is absolutely just, well, watch the video. I just, I have seen a massive increase in hackers once again, and I believe it's because of the update coming on the 16th. But regardless, we're going to be analyzing and breaking down the random quads that we do spectate, as well as really diving in on the elite gameplay from the hacker but before we get into the video if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to the channel join the wolf pack today also leave a like on the video let's get this video to 1500 likes and as always if you guys are looking for some other people to play with make sure you join our discord community the link to that will be in the description below and utilize the looking for groups pages to your advantage to find some squad mates that are actually competent you know way better than randoms and pull out some w's we have over 8,000 members in our discord community that are coming together and getting off wins so make sure you guys are a part of that but without further ado let's go ahead and dive into the video all right here we are spectating mckenzie and his squad now i'm not sure what exactly what happened because i just died in the gulag so i'm not sure exactly the enemy's positions and things like that but if we look over on the mini map we notice there's a most wanted bounty actually hawking us down now just because they have a most wanted bounty doesn't mean they're by themselves and the fact he's playing super aggressive makes me believe he's probably got a full team with him or maybe they're missing one or two people but he's definitely got some teammates usually oh there we go there's one two three and someone shooting in the back all right in this position you're out position you're on top of the rooftop so you have the high ground for sure right high ground is usually the best spot but in this case here you have three guys out in the middle of the open who are probably inside the building now not to mention you have a guy over here by the wood planks that's taking shots at you as well so even if you go to peak one of them you're going to get shot from the other so i would bail off this building on the back side and continue looting and avoid this fight one we're outnumbered four to two and two we just don't have the weapons that i feel comfortable with in fighting uh, a 2v4 so instead of peeking we need to bail no one to bail no one to fight this right here i don't know what he's doing all right that comes down to his aim more than the gun for sure for sure i mean the gun's definitely not the best um but that had a lot to do with accuracy now you need to pop a reload be aware of your ammo reserve he's got seven bullets can you see it i'm on the way probably who knows he's got seven bullets in his gun he needs to reload his teammate just went down he's not even looking to that direction he's still on a rooftop thinking he's safe remember just because you're on a high ground doesn't mean you're completely safe and i'm not liking the fact that he's putting his entire right hand side exposed to chase down one guy again Really, they're in a position now where if they do die, it's not a big deal. They can come back from the gulag and they continue the scavengers, but they need to be able to win their gulags. Two guys on the buy stage. Let's go ahead and get these easy claps. We're hesitating on our shots, allowing the enemy to... Oh, weird. Hit a reload. Weird. Okay. All right. Plays. All right, but now we're in a position we don't like. We have three and a half minutes till the circle starts in closing. So that means we have relatively, I'd say four, four and a half minutes before we have to actually leave this area. But you always want to leave this area before the circle makes you. However, we do have a scavenger bounty. So he needs to either outweigh the enemy or just bail from the scav altogether. Say, screw this. I'll wait two and a half minutes. I'm going to go somewhere else. I don't like the position we're in. And based off his skill level, again, you guys need to know your skill level. If you think you can confidently take on a 1v3 go ahead and do it right now is the time to go push though just be very careful don't leave the cover and go for the execution that's <laughs> now I'll... i was saying you definitely want to push and, and you're like savage he tried to push and he died that's not what happened he went he went out of cover he left his cover to go for an execute instead of playing the last kill who clearly was hiding behind this you want to stick near cover and again don't ever go for executions when you have another enemy around you that's just horrible focus. That's horrible decision making. That's also terrible target prioritization. Always focus the guys who are alive before you focus the ones that are on their knees. All right, but here we are now spectating Orlando Bloom and his squad, um, Arizona, Chang, and Swinty. And again, I'm using streamer mode so that I don't hurt anybody's feelings. So these are not their actual names. We but we have our loadout. We have a shit ton of money and we have a lot we could do around us. If we wanted to get more money, we got scavs over there probably wouldn't focus on that again i really recommend you guys get out there especially if you have everything you need and go on and get some kills so i would definitely hunt down that bounty objective remember especially in quads one bounty could equal four kills so definitely utilize bounties to your advantage now if you're playing solos and stuff like that it's really just pure preference on what you guys would rather um but i think the bounty in any team-based gameplay is the way to go all right but here we are playing the edge of the circle now i'm not that against what they're doing it was the position they were in they knew the team was around them they took care of the team then they ended up buying all of their stuff and getting everything that they needed they weren't really wasting too much time it's just luck of the game in the position that they were dealt 
So they handled it pretty well, and now they are moving out with the Big Bertha. Now, I never recommend sitting on top of cars. People are like savage. People sit on top of cars, so if it explodes, they can jump off. Well, plot twist. If it's about to explode, just jump out, right? Just jump out. Sitting on top is not a good strategy in any stretch of the imagination. Now, if you're a 4KD sweater, and you guys are just jumping off and going Rambo, that's your prerogative. But as normal players play, I never recommend this because your action time just isn't there to be able to bail off before you get beamed right off the vehicle. Now, I'm not really sure what Arizona saw. He tried to ping and he's pinging up here. This is a little, this is a little sus. This dude's pinging shit. Unless guys, you see something I don't. I'm a little, I'm a little skeptical. I'm gonna be honest. We have two vehicles pulling up to the buy station. No surprise there. Um, they actually have the bounty on our guys. So the bounty, who is our squad, Hopefully we get in there, we get a little aggressive, and we, we get some gameplay. But unfortunately, we're all just... This is not the play, brother. But the way to do that, you want to push up there. Because you have the bounty on you, I always want you guys to get out there and try to fight the people hunting you down. It's great practice, and it's a great way to show aggression and practice aggression. That being said, those three guys were crouch walking up the ramp on the hill instead of staying spread out suppressing fire and doing the things that they needed to do. And then two of the teammates instantly went down, one backed out because he's a crybaby bitch. And now here we are spectating Arizona. Um, he's just letting his team die and hiding behind rocks. Stop this, guys. There's no reason for this. Do you know why this is bad? Not because I'm trying to get you guys to be aggressive, not because it's a pussy technique, not because of anything that you guys might think. So the problem with this is you set yourself up to have one enemy walk over the hill and shoot down on you, or the fact that you limit your movement. So if he rounds this right side over here, where are you gonna go? To the right. So it makes the enemy's job real easy, just leading the target one direction, instead of you being able to outmaneuver and hug rocks and bounce from trees and side cancel and bunny hop and do all this crazy shit, you're literally just frozen up. So guess what? You're an easier target for the enemy. So here we are, patiently waiting for Activision to kill all the enemies around us. Hopefully the server glitches <laughs> and uh, their games get disconnected. Or maybe their moms will break their PlayStation. Who knows? Sky's the limit. I'm not really sure what we're doing out here. Comes the heartbeat. I love it. I love it. Turn around. Let it do another sweep. Absolutely. The plays are unreal. Not to mention, sitting there, all we did was allow the enemy team to change their position, which leaves us more confused than anything. We never got to see where they were going to. We never even got to... Did he get stuck? Shut your mouth. <gasps> Lol. Yo, can we get some Fs in the comments, please? I want everyone right now who's watching this video, if you have the ability to, to comment, I don't care. Just comment F. Show me who the real ones are out here. All right, but here we are moving out and running away from the team. Now, I always I always try to shit on people who back out of games and leave their squad mates by themselves. But honestly, I don't blame the two guys that backed out. I really don't. Um, Arizona did very, very bad in that strat. Um, he was not a team player at all. He tried to lead the aggression by marking the enemies. Um, pinging it, showing their location. The moment push came to shove, he was the first to run away. He was the first to run away. All right, so here we are with Arizona. Now we're on the edge of the circle. The problem with being on the edge of the circle is people are gonna be camping around here or people are gonna be on rooftops watching for us to run into safety. But we need money. We gotta get our money to get our one teammate back. It's definitely a priority for sure. This is why I always say don't play the edge of the circle because if you play the edge of the gas, this is what ends up happening. The gas most of the time will force you to put yourself in a bad position to cross over to get to the next spot. And if you're playing the edge of the gas, then people sitting on these rooftops right here are gonna be watching this ravine. And the moment you go to cross, they're gonna snipe you in the face. So I always recommend you guys get out there and pre-rotate before the circle forces you to rotate. That way gatekeepers haven't had the time to set up on rooftops and watch the area that you're about to cross into. Not to mention, bigger circle enemies are more spread out the smaller the circle gets the more clustered they are despite the player count going down it still makes it more difficult so i always recommend pre-planning your rotation almost instantly and rotating early if you are in a bad position and as you can tell because of the ravine i always split my circle using open areas of the map this right here got 20 percent of the circle on one side 80 percent on the other so guess where it's going to go it's definitely going to dive left no doubt about that in my head at all all right but we don't have any money unfortunately and we got a flag objective the problem with i don't like this here he is sitting in a bush, looking around, and I'm surprised he didn't get headshotted, to be honest. <laughs> Yo, I just spoke that right into existence. Rip, here we are spectating George, my man. He's got an HDR that's a pretty decent. Um, when he shot that gun, it, it literally had, it snapped. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a script kitty among us. And if you guys are like, Savage, what's a script kitty? 
It's actually what these hackers should be called. He's level 25, of course, and he's taking shots at FU Mountain. I mean, the, the raw skill. All right, shake back, shake back. I'm getting, I'm getting angry. You can't get angry at shit like this. Thanks a lot, Activision, for uh, allowing this shit to happen for an entire year. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are spectating Giorgio, who's on an absolute rampage. Phases after this man, hundred thieves is after this man, optics after this man. People are trying to draft this dude like he's a first round pick in the NFL, taking shots with no grip on the M4 from long range distance and confidently blowing bitches away insane this is something you cannot learn this is something you have to be born with he has cybernetic eyes that allow him to see through trees on monitors the weirdest shit ever god i wish i had those awesome eyes this is some cyberpunk 2077 bullshit all right well we got 12 kills this could be a uh this could be a 30 bomb especially for the skill level he's at right so here we are again my man ghost is actually his name we went ahead and undid streamer mode for this shit and he went ahead and got another easy beam. I want everybody to see how good this player is and really just give him the props he deserves. My man Ghost out here slaying it up. Now, it's the weirdest thing. A lot of hackers, a lot of scripters um, always use like names like General Shepard, Ghost, um, Woods. They always use characters' names from Call oh, He's an up oh, here. Oh, he hit him with the jump shot. My man is absolutely unstoppable. Rocking 15 kills with 34 enemies left and 12 teams total on the map, but we got to get out of here. We need to leave this position. The circle's forcing us in and we are going to get clapped if we don't move early. All right, my man just bought some shit, dropped his money for his team. What a team player. This is what I try to teach you guys all the time. Teamwork is the dream work, am I right? Is is I is Isla, Isila, Isla. That dude right there getting into the vehicle. Now we're driving off to the Northwest to cross this open ravine putting us in a bad position um, in order to get safe from the zone. Now, as you're driving to safety, always keep scanning around like he's doing. Make sure you're always keeping your eyes on what's around you because you could probably catch an enemy out in the open that's crossing just like you. And maybe to your advantage, he might be on foot. But here we are stopping to get some more loot. Why not? Let's change some weapons, test out the ADS speed. Eh, not really good enough for my hack. Switch back and rock the kilo once again. I probably would have swapped out the HDR for the other sniper, but it is what it is. Oh, here we are picking up. The Car 98 would be a great one as well. Oh, testing out this gun. Nah, don't really like that. Doesn't benefit my hacks at all. Go to this M4. Nope, nope, I don't know. Let's try this gun right here. Let me pick it up. Wait, I don't like that angle. Oh, picked it up. Shit, same gun I already had. Now I gotta swap it out. Damn it, I just picked up the same gun I just dropped. I want this one, got it. Oh, shit, I swapped it on accident before I could even look at it. And here we are. This just goes to show you how shitty script kitties really are, guys. If you guys get mad that there's hackers in the game, and trust me, I do too. I'll I'll break monitors over this shit. But uh, if you guys get mad, just remember at the end of the day, these kids are so bad at the game. I mean, they need it. And they still, most of the time, can't win, even cheating. Like, that's pretty bad, dude. If you lose scripting, bro, dude, could you imagine cheating and knowing exactly where everyone's at and still not winning a game? Like, I feel like if I loaded hacks up, which I won't because I'm not a pile of shit, but if I did have the urge to load up some hacks, I would feel pretty confident that I would never lose a game ever. I mean, dude, if you know where everyone's at, you can rotate the circles perfectly as long as you're aware on rotations. You could beam everybody, duh, because of aimbot. I mean, this, there's no reason for hackers to ever lose, yet we always spectate hackers getting clapped in the face. Now, enough trolling the script, kitties. In the, the day, guys, if you guys are out here like, I want to get some scripts and be just as good as ghosts, don't do it. Don't do it because eventually, eventually, hopefully, maybe one day by the grace of Call of Duty gods, um, there's going to be an anti-cheat in the game. And then everybody who's been using scripts is going to be going back to straight garbage like we're watching now. Get better at the game so when you do play another shooter that has an anti-cheat or once an anti-cheat gets in this game, you guys won't be hindered at all. It won't bother you. But again, enough bitching about it. Here we are spectating Ghost, the phase prospect in a 1v29. Now, I say a 1v29 because his teammate clearly knows what's happening. And the reason why I say that is because he's hugging his ass like it's nobody's business. Usually it's players, no matter what, they really won't hug you like this. I mean, look at this. You can barely see the purple. You can barely see the purple arrow on the mini map. All right, so what you want to do in this position, get on the rooftop. You need to get on the rooftop. Why did he get on the rooftop? Savage, he knows where everyone's at. You're an idiot. 
the reason why you want to get on the rooftop is because you want to have high ground around everything. You have these beautiful cubbies, even on this building, which I would definitely get this building, not that one, because this one's taller, duh. But everyone's going to be coming into you, right? Whether you have scripts or not, you want to be on this building so you can gatekeep everybody coming in, as well as the guys from Superstore. Not only are you gatekeeping to the east, but you're also gatekeeping to the south. You literally have 180 degrees of the map coming at your face, and it's going to be real easy for you to get some kills. Real easy. He's marked two enemies. Absolutely incredible. I don't even know how he spotted them. Pure skill right here. Here comes a guy bailing in from the heavens, spraying and praying. Now I see why he got the uh, the drums on the kilo. Now I see why. Cracks his armor, goes for the reload. Is he going to hit the shot? My man pulls the shoe at the last second. It gets beamed. Ghost is absolutely going off right now. Remember, he marked the enemy on the right-hand side. He sees... An enemy in the street gets the down, goes for the X. He says, screw it, sprays through the bushes, gets some more hit markers, absolute skill, raw skill, shoots a guy in the window. The enemy team coming around to the end, and instead of using the, no, instead, <laughs> instead of using his AR uh, efficiently and conserving his ammo, he's spraying and praying everywhere, wasting his ammunition so that when an enemy does push him close quarter, he's forced to have seven bullets in his kilo or swap to his HDR for a close range fight, and of course, miss. Remember guys, no matter how many scripts you have, most people that use scripts, 99% of them are absolute dog shit. All right, but here we are, spectating the man, the myth, the legend, Ty, and they are forced into a 4v17 situation, so it's not bad. We are in game, there's seven teams left, and we have a good position. We're on the rooftop, hopefully we catch some Bettys coming in and blaze them down in a blaze of glory. Now, judging by circle position right now, the circle's gonna finish on the west-hand side. And the reason why I say it's gonna finish on the west is because, well, we need to be aware of that and start rotating. The last thing we wanna do, let's watch. Just watch where the circle goes. Oh, weird. Oh, rip, yep. All right. Who do you shoot, man? Who do you shoot? The guy that we're about to get the headshot on, or the, or do we transition to the guy on the right and get a headshot on him? Does it matter? Yeah, it does, because if you down this guy, guess what? Homeboy's gonna res him. But if you move your crosshair to this dude's head and you get the headshot, he falls to his death, and that's a kill for you. Remember, try to focus on the enemies out in the open instead of focusing on the guys that are head glitching and behind cover, because even if you down them, at the end of the day, that does nothing for you. And uh, he's just gonna get res. Lo and behold, gets the down, and there's Homeboy going for the res. Boom, easy. But we're in a real bad position right now. This team just playing the edge of the circle. They're hyper focused on teams that really they really shouldn't be. They need to be rotating to airport, and hopefully on the other side of airport, and getting safe. Uh, there's a hundred percent chance this team will die and lose this game because there's no way in hell they're gonna be able to rotate playing the edge of the circle. They're gonna have to be fighting people inside airport, fighting people by the tents in front of airport, fighting people in the air tower to the right hand side. Um, they're just in a very very bad spot right now. Not to, yeah, the, the tents just bought back too. So we know there's people there. That was a weird way to look up, brother. All right, but now that the circle's moving, so is our team. But other people, there's an enemy right there behind the wall, bro. Oh. Uh, I, well, I mean, just. And his team's not covering him. No one is even looking over there and shooting. All right, regardless, we need to move out. And of course, there's other teams on the edge of the circle with us. So we need to be careful. That guy's still alive, I think. I'm not sure, really sure what happened to him. He downed us and then just vanished like Houdini. But like I said, we're gonna have to run through airport, go around a tent, and then worry about control tower. So this is a very bad spot because we're gonna get pinched from the rooftop of airport because we already pissed them off. We're gonna be getting pinched from the air control tower because, well, they're just always a bunch of bitches. And of course, we know that somebody bought back at the buy station over by the tents. So we're really just putting ourselves in a terrible position. If I would have been in this game, I would have rotated early. The moment he shot out the vehicle by the dealership, I would have been rotating to the garage of airport and then up the west hand side of the map and getting on the high ground. I would not put myself in this position ever in game. Right here we have tracers, or I'm sorry, audio from the weapons coming from the tower. It seems closer than up in the tower though. Oh, they're in the window, that's why. Yeah, there's three of them in there. <laughs> Weird. Now again, this is a position they put themselves into. Sometimes there's positions you guys are in that you cannot work yourself out of and whose fault is that? It's usually our fault. All right, here we are with the sniper. Now the last thing we're gonna do is scan in your scope. Remember, look at the enemy, then ADS, and also leaving hard cover. We're sitting in the open. We have cover right here. You can use the head glitch or you can at least stay close to the tent. That way, if he gets shot at, he can dive back behind the concealment 
and change his position. But we left. We're about five feet away from the tent. So we're kind of out in the open. Someone bailed off behind us. I hear the parachute. We've taken a little too long to get our headshots, but he's obviously not that efficient with the sniper. You always want to take your time when you're trying to practice with the snipe. So I'm not going to slay him for that. Take your time. Make sure your shot's on point before you pull the trigger. I'll give you credit, but you need to make sure you speed up your reaction time. Now, don't do this. You have to know when you just have to let your teammates die. What y'all should have done in this position, and I was just talking way too much and never got to talk about it, but let's look at the circle position. Where is it? It's right by tower, right? So the guys in tower have a great spot. The circle may favor them after this. The circle may not, but we'll get there when we get there. What this team should have done was the moment they're in this position, they should have run to the tents that we were just at, right? Back here, and they should have made a beeline for the tunnel. Either that one or that one. I probably would have went for this one because it's a little bit safer. Um, but they should have made a beeline for the tunnel. Now, why should they have made a beeline for the tunnel? Because if you're familiar with the map, the tunnel is actually safe in the next zone. Not to mention, if the zone does rotate, there's also an exit point within the next zone that they could leave. So that's their only play. Running in the tunnel and coming up through the tunnel and fighting the people that are in the tunnel, which I'm sure there are, would be a better option than running out in the airfield um, with these guys camping in a window as well. There might be a team in the tower too. We don't know. And all you're doing is put yourself in a position to get executed going for your teammate. Know when to let them die. I always want to get my teammates up by all means, but know when to let them die. And here we are spectating the squad in the upper tower. I don't know if this is the same squad in the lower tower or not. I'm not sure. But as you see right below them, here's the tunnel. Tunnel safe in the next zone. All right, let's see where the circle position goes. Now, I really hope the circle favors the other team. It kind of does, honestly. Now, this team can stay in the circle for a while. Well, for 20, 30 seconds. This, team, this team's still safe in the next zone. But again, play the odds. What does it look like it's going to do after this? Well, this is the last final position of the circle. So what's going to happen now is the circle is going to randomly choose a different area outside the circle and force one of these teams to leave their position. If this circle rotates anywhere to our left-hand side, we are favored and will probably win the game because it will force everybody over here to run out in the open and let us blaze them down. However, if the circle does favor the people to the right-hand side, the people in the tunnel, the circle will then rotate that way. We'll have to jump off of this and we'll probably get beamed out of the air. And I really hope that's what happens because this team deserves it for camping. But again, this is where the luck factor comes in. No matter how you rotate, no matter how good your gunplay is, no matter how smart you are, no matter how good you are at the game, this last circle really will dictate the winner of the game no matter what. But with saying that, not all hope is lost. But we'll get there when we get there. So what I would do in this position was be I'd be pre-planning for the worst case scenario. I would go ahead and plan for the circle to rotate out of our position. I would jump off the back side of this tower right here. And I would land on this roof. Why would I do that? Because I would decrease my hang time when I do parachute down, right? Not to mention, jumping off the back side will protect me from everybody over here. And I won't get beamed. Because if we do wait until the next zone and the zone does push us up here, guess what's going to happen? Well, as we're parachuting... They're going to be missed out the air. So I want to get on this smaller roof. That way, again, if the circle does rotate, we'll be at two different positions as a team. A couple of us can cover the others while we're parachuting down. And it's just a great way to utilize this circle to our favor. Right now, it's just a waiting game. You really can't do much. Even if the other teams do get a knock on this squad, there's nothing that that squad can do to get the execution unless they have a precision or a cluster. Um, it's just a waiting game. We just have to wait, you know, 30 seconds. So here we are. All right, so the circle did dive completely out of our favor. Completely out of our favor. So we have to move to the enemy. And this is this is where this team messed up. Now, again, there are ways to outplay this, but at the end of the day, it is luck. I would have jumped off and been on the lower rooftop. That way, when these three dipshits decided to jump off the high point, I could at least provide cover to them um, and suppress the enemy, giving them time to land safely. But because they're all going to be up here together, and I'm going to assume they're all going to jump together, which is definitely another bad strategy, um, these guys are going to get blitzed out one at a time, I would imagine. All right, here goes the first one. All right, on to the next. Um, Bright's now getting shot at. Oh, oh, Carnal. All right, on to the next one. We're now two, two men down. All right, what else we got, brother? What else do we got? And as you can see, this team's playing the wall. They knew what they had to do. They knew the circle rotated there. They knew they didn't have to rotate yet. They're just going to play the cover and wait for the circle to force the team out. They are playing this in circle correctly. I don't know if we'll be able to finish watching the match. Here we go. All right, last guy's in the tunnel. It ended up going from a 4v4 to 1v4 because this team just played very scared. Stop doing this shit. You guys are way better than you give yourselves credit for. You guys just put yourselves in bad positions because of the fear that sets in. 
All right, all right, all right. At least, at least you try to have some kind of move in that fight, but then the day again, it was nothing he could really do. Those guys would have definitely just shit on his face. So we experienced a lot in this game. A great in circle that ended up screwing a team camping and overstaying their welcome. We learned how to change our position from that. Also, we got to spectate a hacker. I don't really post too many hacking gameplays because I just really don't like it. But since it was in the middle of an analyzation video, I decided to screw it, why not? So script kitties are gonna be really, really common here in the next few days because when a new update drops or when a new game drops, everyone wants to do their best. Everyone's trying to get their game footage for their YouTube or Twitch, whatever the hell they're doing. Um, so people are gonna be hacking their asses off for sure so guys we just got to deal with the bs get through the first couple months and then hopefully it'll subside and we'll be okay but i really hope you enjoyed the video if you did make sure you leave a like on the video subscribe today and as always you have a good one until next time good luck in warzone thank you for watching i really hope you enjoyed the video if you did make sure you check out one of these two bangers right there and as always subscribe by clicking that beautiful button right there you have a good one until next time keep on improving